All right, now it's time to create our beautiful about page and then make our contact page and some other nice sub pages on the site like blankets and pillows. And I'm really excited because I was able to record some more photos and videos for the site. So let's start by going to about in our navigation. Just click edit page. And the design we'll do here will be the general structure and template for the important subpages on our site. For starters, hit hide page title because we're going to create our own in Visual Composer. And then make that template full width. Great stuff. Now click back end editor. We're going to build this in the back end so we can see all our rows and elements right in a smaller screen like this. And then maybe as you make small tweaks to the page, you can use the front end editor. And now just click Add Element. And the first element we want is a title. This first title will be the new page title. So just write in about the company. Let's keep H1 and let's change font family to secondary font so this stands out a little more. For the font color, we want white, save, oops, open that up one more time, and text align center, and save changes. Great job, now we want another element in this column. So let's click this lower plus, and choose another title, which will be our subheader, and then write in our story is one of a kind like your pet. Because this is a subheader, it should be smaller. H4 should do. Secondary font to remain consistent. Let's set the color to white. And then, of course, text align center. And save. Great job. Now, if we publish this sort of a header and subheader, it would actually get in the way of our navigation menu. So we need to move it down a little bit on the page. To do that, let's add some more spacing and let's click the pencil to edit the column. And now in design options, let's add a margin of 10% and a margin of 4%. 10% above this content and 4% below this content. And save changes. And then lastly, because we made our title and our subheader white, we want to set a background to the whole row. So click this pencil now to edit the row. Click design options, and in background, I'm going to paste in the hex that was from our footer and our top bar. Click away, and the color will populate. Save changes. Now update. Open the page in a new tab. And we have the nice start to our about page. I don't like this dark font though in the navigation menu and on our logo. And because we set up the dark header and the light header in customize earlier on in the video, we can just go back to edit page and choose light for header transparency. Update. And now we can take advantage of that other color scheme. So up to you, but just a personal preference. All right, let's create some more rows on this page and some more sections. We can click the big plus in backend editor and now just add a text block, which will go right inside a row. And in this section, I want to put some real images of me and my girlfriend playing with comfy animals. So what's the best way to put a few images into a text block onto a page and make them look good? Well, I could just delete the text and add media, but a better way would be to put them in an image gallery slider so that customers can scroll through them and not have to worry about different image sizes looking awkward. So let's just save the dummy text and update, and I'm going to show you how to insert an image gallery slider in a text block.
which can be useful in many places on your site. To do this, come to Plugins, where it looks like we also need to update a couple of our plugins here in the dashboard. Just a routine step you're going to want to keep an eye on. Paid Membership Pro can be updated and Profile Builder can be updated because the developers are working every day on their own time to make these plugins amazing and they release new versions. And then just click Add New. And in the search bar, pop in Meta Slider. It's the web's best free slider, in my opinion. There we go. Click Install Now on this blue Meta Slider. And activate. And now let's just create a really basic, simple image slider gallery. So come down to our new Meta Slider section. This plugin will of course be in addition to the 15 or so plugins we installed initially and uh, just a little bonus I wanted to show you. So click create your first slideshow. Now click add slide and it will open up our media. We want to upload some images we've taken on our phone or on our camera and select. And once you do that, you gotta find the images. I have two images, Waving the Pup and Kiss the Pup. Click Enter. And here these images are, and they're humongous. We can see they're 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. And 3,000 by 4,000. Interesting. If we add these images to the slider and then publish the slider, the slider will expand and contract as the images rotate to accommodate the different sizes, which can be a good feature, just not for now. So let's just X out and name the slider and just save it with nothing in it. And we're going to edit those images, then come put them back in the slider when they're ready to go. So let's go to media and I'll show you how to edit images. Open up the first image, which is wider than it is tall. All right, so we're just gonna make this image a square. Click edit. And now in aspect ratio, hit one, tab one to set the one to one ratio and then hold the shift bar, click on top of the image and drag and keep holding shift to maintain that square. Very nice. Once you've got the largest possible selection, hit crop. And of course, save. Now our selection should be 3024 by 3024 pixels. Nice high resolution image. And we can do that to the other one. It will be the reverse process, but because one side is 3024 and the other side is larger, we can create a square. So click Edit Image. Same ratio as before, one tab one. And then remember to hold shift, drag, hold shift, drag, hold shift and drag. We can get that whole dog in there because my hair didn't look too great that day. And there we go. Just click crop and save. And there you go, guys. You just created two images of the same size that were taken on an iPhone 6. X out and let's go back to Meta Slider where our images will be ready to go. Click add slide. And you can just choose both by holding uh, Command on a Mac. Not sure what that is on a PC. And add to slider. Very cool. Now in the slider settings, we want to make a quick adjustment. We want the height and the width to be equal to each other. So let's try 700 both. And there's some more settings you could play around with if you want. 
all for free here in MetaSlider. All right, very nice. Now I just want to click down here and copy another short code. You're getting to be an expert with short codes. Save the slider. Close the screen and let's come back and edit our about page. I want the back end editor and we want to insert this short code over the text block. So click edit text block and just go to text because we're using a short code and paste that bad boy right over the text. Now we're also going to want to center this because that way it will be in the center of the screen. So what I like to do is use the hard center using this center tag as you see here alligator slash center close alligator and save. update and refresh and there we go very nice so you can include as many images as you want but we've just done two for now and your customers can drag through and check out you and your significant other and your animals and your products alright and if you want to give your customers an even more intimate experience we can add video to this page just like we added it to the bottom of the home page come back to the edit screen let's create a text tab underneath the subheader so our video link will go at the top and click text block and now come back over to our video notes and take advantage of the video code again and now we're just going to highlight the code on line 3 which is the video pop out button the code on line one is the header, which you can change, saying watch our video. But we just want the button. So just highlight all of line three and scroll all the way over. Right click, copy. And now paste that in. We can go to the text tab to make it easier. Paste. And I want to change the YouTube video now because I actually have a good one called He's So Cute. We can copy the link and then just paste it in right between these quotation marks in that href tag. Just paste that to change it. Save changes. Update. Refresh. And now people can click on a new video link just a reminder to film your videos holding your iPhone sideways. So that was of course a really fun day meeting this new comfy animal. Now we want to actually write out your story on the about page, which will go below the image slider. So back to edit page and let's open up a new row, text block, delete. And what I did to save us some time was write out a story in a different text block right here. And then I styled it using things like a block quote, this button is a block quote in the top area and then I put in spacing throughout the story which is just a matter of a few text paragraphs I set the whole thing to a heading 4 and I also made the color equal to our main site color in the top bar in the footer etc and you can do that by highlighting the text and clicking text color and then choosing custom Try that again. Looks like we have to click on custom right there. And then paste in the hex right here. So to save us some time, I made this in a different text block, like I said. 
And if you ever want to copy some text exactly as it is in one text block to a different text block, with all the formatting, just go to the text tab, hit control A, control C, and then we can bring that back into a fresh text block and just paste it in. Save changes, and now our story is good to go. I want to make a couple changes to this row, however. If we edit row, I want to choose stretch row so that the sides of this text go all the way across and it's not pushed into the middle. And then in design options, I want a gray background through the whole thing. So let's choose that and save, update, and check it out. Alright, pretty nice. And it looks like we actually don't want stretch row because this text is too wide for us. So that means we need to actually add some padding so that there's more space around all the text. Back to edit and just click on the text block edit, the green pencil. And then in design, let's just add 5% padding around the whole thing. Alright, nice small round number, and update, and that looks good, exactly as we want our story to look. Alright guys, I don't know how much more you want on your about page, but design to your heart's content and let your story come to life. We had put a poem on the demo site, but we're going to chop that for now, because I think this page says a lot already, and I'm confident this will work. Now that we've said what we wanted to say through the About page, it's time to let our customers say what they want to say through the Contact page. And if the About page was about getting to know the customer, this page is really about getting to know the customer. The most important thing will be making this page easy to use so that you get a lot of feedback because feedback and responses make people happy. To create this page, just click Edit Page again. We're going to use a very similar format to the About page. So make sure you have Hide Page Title, Light Header Transparency, and Full Width Page Set. Now click Back End Editor again, and Add Element, click Row, and we're going to set up the same sort of header and subheader as the about page. So just click plus and for a header we want a title. Now we can just write in get in touch, keep the h1 tag and use the secondary font to stand out a little bit. Let's set the color to a white color, all F's and text align center and save now one more title so plus title and this is where your copywriting skills might come in handy I don't have those however so I'm just gonna write in we're happy to give you animal advice and talk comfort right meow and now H4, secondary font, white color again, white color, and text line center, H4 for a smaller subheader. That looks great, so save changes. Now we need to set some spacing for our columns so that the text won't conflict with the logo and the navigation. So pencil on the column, design options and let's set a margin of 10% and then instead of 4% like we did on the about page let's do 8% because we want to account for the space that that hover button takes up and we want the blue background to come down to the same point on the about and the contact pages which you'll see in a second 
Then for background, we need our hex color, but we don't want it on the column. We want it on the row. So just save. And now let's edit the row as opposed to the column or the titles. Click Edit Row. And if you need any of the exact colors we use from the demo set, I'm going to insert those for you as well on the video notes in site-wide colors. We can just highlight and copy the dark blue, including that pound sign now. And then it's really easy to use that color. Just put that in, in design options, background of course. That will come in, and perfect. Because we're confident, we're just going to keep going now. Add a new row and a text block. Text blocks are perfect, again, for pasting in HTML that other websites generate for us. And we're going to paste in a Google form here made by Google and Google Drive. For now, we'll just save the text block. And I want to edit the column and just set up some margin in advance for us of 5%. Perfect. And save. And we can also set up the title, which will sit above our Google form. So let's add to the column, title, more copywriting, submit a message through our form, and we'll get back to you in a, about an hour. All right, so whatever you write in, you do have to, uh, or at least try very hard to hold up to that claim. Let's set an H2 for a little bit smaller, but not too small, and secondary font. For this section, we're going to use a white background and a blue color for the font, so the reverse of the section above it. Let's paste in that hex again for our font color and almost save, but we want to center and now save. Now it's time to create our Google form. So if you have a Google Drive, that's great, and if not, you need to sign up for Google Drive and get all the awesome free tools that they have. And believe it or not, everything works really professionally and some of the biggest companies I've ever seen use Google Drive to handle everything from contact forms to finance spreadsheets. So we're going to use them too because they work great. And to create our form, I've already made one, but right now we want to click New and then under More Google Forms. Excellent. All right. The design has already become more sleek since the last time I looked. So we'll just work through it. Let's say no thanks because I'll give you the tour now. All right. So first thing we need is a title. And again, you can use your copywriting skills, but just double click on the untitled form part and then write in contact us. That's what we're going to write. Really simple. And let's click plus to add a question now. And I just want to write in name. And then in the drop down area here, we can change it to short answer, which is just going to be one short answer. Now click required and click these three dots and then click hint text because everyone deserves a good hint your full name. Perfect. And that section's done, so let's click plus again. Now we want someone's email to confirm that they're a real person and so that we can respond to them. And this won't be multiple choice. I'm not sure why it's set to multiple choice because most things are short answers in my opinion, but oh well. All right, now click required again and the three dots for hint text and write in your best email address. Because we really do want someone's main email, we don't want to be responding to some crappy email they never check, which uh, wouldn't help at all. All right, and plus again. For this one, we actually are going to use multiple choice, so that works, and just click subject, write in subject, click required, hint text again, and just write in 
please describe your message. And I know it might be tempting to be clever when you're designing a form, but my best advice is just try to be nice and polite. All right, so now we can edit the options. The first option someone could check is shipping slash order status. The second option will be change or cancel my order. The third option will be request a return. The fourth option, if you click add other, it doesn't seem to work as well. So make sure you click add option. I'm just gonna write in woof and uh, nay nay for a silly option. And then one more, which is just other. Great, and we need one more section, which is the actual message area. So let's just call this enter your message here. And we don't need any help text right there. Just required, change multiple choice to paragraph. And we should be all set. Of course, you can tweak the copywriting to fit your site and your niche. But that's what we want right now. And when we're all done designing our form, let's click send. And now just click one of these two. We don't want link, we want embed HTML. Perfect, this is what goes inside a website within a text block. And we want the height to be bigger, so let's highlight that and make it 1000. That will update automatically, and then you can just copy and then hit copy here, however you've been copying, and cancel. We're not actually sending that form to anyone, we're just sending it to ourselves, really, via the copy tool. All right, now let's go back to the page editor, open up that text block, go to the HTML tab, and then just delete dummy text and hit paste. Very nice. And I know right now that we're going to want to center this form too, so let's use our hard center method using alligator center close alligator and then make sure to close out that tag as well. And save. Excellent. We just need to drag this title up above There we go. Update. When we create a free Google form, we also get the option to record responses in a free spreadsheet. And we want to do that. Let's click responses and click create spreadsheet. And just call it whatever works best for you. Like check this daily and create. Now the options you gave your customer for the contact form will be in the top row and you can change those of course like maybe instead of timestamp we want timestamp doesn't make a ton of sense so I'm just gonna write in date sent and the rest looks great you can also change the formatting and widths to your liking. And let's test out that form now. View page. All right, well, let's make sure it's working. So how about name? Craig email, Craig at gmail. Subject. Submit, and someone will get this confirmation message, and then you will get a notification in your form, which is pretty cool. You can then arrange the the messages you get based on the criteria, or delete them. You know, prioritize them, change the color, whatever works for you. 
And before we leave this page, we also want to set this spreadsheet to notify us when someone sends through the form. So click on Tools and then Notification Rules. And then just check the box for Notify me at your email when a user submits a form and when any changes are made. It looks like we can't do both, even though I thought we could. So let's just do a user hits that submit button. And then notify me with email right away so you can get back to them within the hour that we're promising. And save. All right, it kind of looks techy that they called it a rule, but this is all set up now. We can just click done. You will now get emailed right away when someone submits a message through our new contact form. Have fun practicing those customer service skills. And the last step we want to do on our form is just change the background color. So we can go to form, edit form. It'll open up this page again and click color palette. And then let's go with, oh, geez, they've really made this uh, cute, haven't they? Nope, that would be preview, color palette again. Here we are in select theme and hopefully we can just get a basic transparent theme. But you can see there are some pretty cool themes actually, like one with a moving creek. which could work for your business. I'm not sure if that creek will start moving eventually, but I don't want to wait for it. For some reason, we can't figure out how to totally remove the color background on our Google form. So what I'm going to recommend now is an illustration, which you won't get tired of, hopefully. And then I'll set up another smaller tutorial on how to just change the background color when I figure out how to do it. Going to grab a simple pattern like this one and select. And I want to change the height of our Google form because Google made their forms bigger. Let's try 1300 instead. Save, update. Perfect. Below our form, we want a Google map. To create that, we can go to edit page again, add row, and choose Google Map. Perfect. Now we need the exact latitude and longitude of our location where we work, where we have our office. And if you don't want to set this up, I totally understand. But to get that exact uh, information, use the link in our video notes under Google Map. Just click mapcoordinates.net and then type in your location. In my case, it's Chelsea Market at the YouTube headquarters. And this will get you a more precise uh, pinpoint than Google Maps will actually. A little bit more precise. So we can copy now and paste latitude. Copy the longitude and paste longitude. 400 pixels height is good, and for some reason it knows our color scheme already, which is pretty smart. And I just click Save Changes. Great job. I'm going to open that one more time though and make sure we have Get Directions button enabled, which is a cool feature that can tell someone how to get to us. Save. Now our map needs a title. So let's add that title. And let's say stop by our new Chelsea Market office. Even though it's not really an office that I have here, it's just more like a soundproof working cubicle that's not even soundproof. Gotta yell at someone about that. Let's go with an H2 now and secondary font. And then for the color, we can get the hex that we've been using for the blue. Not the whole thing, but just the blue. And let's pop that in color. Save changes. 
Not sure why it doesn't know that we want this centered though. That would be really smart. Center line and then drag it above the map. And before we update, I want to set the padding on this column to zero on the right and on the left so that it knows to make this full width. Just set up those two numbers and save and our map should be good to go. Update. And let's check it out, view page. And we are looking pretty good. The map now works and perhaps more importantly it won't scroll or move around when we go on top of the map like this, which some other maps do. If we click get directions, then the customer can get directions to us and come tell us how great a job we did or complain. And we need a little padding around that map itself. So let's edit page. And because we can't put padding on the map itself, it doesn't have design options, let's just put some padding on the title of 2% beneath. Save and update. The final section of our contact page, which is becoming quite a project here, but it's worth it because you'll never have to create this again, is a social media section. It's kind of nice how we can put the social media anywhere on the site. And to get our buttons, just click Social Media Profiles. Now let's set up the alignment center. Font size 32 pixels, and the color is going to be our main blue. Save changes. Next, on the column with the social media profiles, we want some spacing. 4% margin and 6% margin on the bottom should do it. Save. And now update. View page. And we can see we've created a finished product, a beautiful contact us page. As usual, play around with the uh, endless features in WordPress to make this page totally yours. With our contact page and our about page done now and looking just as we want them to, I'd like to shift gears away from all the designing and add a lot more products to our shop and get the shop done because that's what we came here to do really, isn't it? Sorry about all these browser tabs. Let's just close those and now head back to the home page and click shop 